Hello and welcome to the new episode of Inspiria Gyan series. I am Taqi Haider and in this podcast series we will inform the audience about different education fields and the career options involved in that particular field of study. In our studio today we have a very special guest with us. She is Anisha Ghosh, assistant professor from BBA department from our own college in Speria Knowledge Campus and today we are going to discuss a very important topic that is career in storytelling and content writing she has around 6 years of total experience uh, so welcome to the inspiria gyan series ma'am thank you so much sir for having me here it's a pleasure to have you on my show the pleasure is all mine Oh that's great. So uh, let me just start with the podcast with my first question that is uh first of all tell us about Inspiria Mike people are talking about it and uh, they wanted to know more about it so please tell us about it. Uh well uh, sir Inspiria Mike I mean that's an irony that you are asking me about Inspiria Mike as you are as much a part of it as I am. but just for our audiences uh, inspiria mic is actually an open platform for students where they can yes very nice improve upon their communication skills yeah. through the interesting art of storytelling that's right now the idea came to us from our own institution head we all know him as yeah. ic sir yes. so uh, sir is somebody who is very interested in literature That's he right. reads a lot and yeah. whenever he reads through something nice he will come to me mm. and talk to me about it and we will discuss for us so a very interesting um mm. uh, conversation comes up every time he yes, gets to read right. something new yeah. and he uh, is really fond of um, the storytelling uh, yes this new genre that is coming yeah. up and uh, it is his brainchild actually right. so when he muted this subject with me and uh, i clearly remember the day the first yeah. day he called us yeah, for the interview yeah. Uh, yeah, a, a meeting together yes, right yes that's right so we sat together and we decided that uh, let's have a platform for our students yeah. to come up and speak yeah speak and improve upon their communication skills mm-hmm. through the art of storytelling that's right now uh, it's uh, it's it's quite a baby now you yeah. know the club is just, just a newborn baby yes, yeah yes in a, yeah. in its nascent stage yeah. and we only had three sessions uh, mm-hmm. as a filter for uh, churning out talent yeah. because we need to see how interested students are because this is something uh, which only uniquely interested students can build on that's right so uh, uh, we had these three preliminary sessions in which we ho- held storytelling yeah. rounds where we had featured speakers we had different themes we began with yeah. uh, a common uh, theme then we went to the horror theme That's right. and then we came to childhood memories these were the, the these yeah. were the three sessions that we had That's so right. far and yeah. every day what happens is uh, what we do in inspiria uh, my this uh, storytelling sessions of inspiria mike yeah. we usually seat the students together in the library in circles wow and we give them a start up line mm-hmm. either sir or me we give a start up line and mm-hmm. following that line each student contributes one line from their side till they finish the circle right. and end the story so different yeah. narratives come together to build one grand That's narrative right. which That's is right. an amazing experience yeah. so all the students get their creative energies together and try to build stories out of their own unique perspectives which That's is right. pretty amazing i think it's That's shaping right. up nice right sir yeah yeah means yeah. uh, yeah please complete Yeah. yeah and uh, the purpose of having this uh, initiative in the form of inspiria mic is yeah. that we me and uh, taki sir here together we are trying to build the students into good voice artists because That's this right. industry yeah. has immense potential and sir is somebody yeah. uh, i mean he needs no introduction when yeah. it comes to uh, voice artistry when it comes to radio shows when it comes to uh, dramaturgy sir mm. is somebody who has an immense amount of experience so sir would you please like to uh, share uh, your insights like yeah. what was the objective behind training them in this storytelling session Yes, as you mentioned very rightly, uh, the man behind this uh, Inspiria Mike is our own IC sir. He gave this idea, and uh, there was an idea in in my brain, but it was not coming out. So actually, you and sir helped me. Uh, my basic uh, work is to just train our student to become a storyteller, uh, to become more uh, self-aware about their talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only from mass communication or the media science department but we have a strength we have a huge strength 
and if we can create a good storytellers a good voice artist and there are a lot of talent available so just my um, my work is to just nourish them train them and let's see if we can uh, produce some good storytellers and voice uh, voice artists so this is what i'm doing right now and i'm really uh, thankful to you and sir for giving me this platform of inspire mike and i believe that uh, we have a lot of good talented student mm-hmm. and uh, we are improving day by day mm-hmm. and we all uh, upload all those things on uh, social media yes, yes. and uh, because of this we get a lot of mileage and people and students are coming and, and joining in yeah people are really liking uh, right. how we are going ahead with uh, the inspira mic storytelling right. sessions so far we haven't yeah. had a big event yet because That's we right. need to prepare the kids a little bit more yeah, yeah. we have a lot of plans which we will be sharing That's in course right. of this pod- yeah. podcast and sir let me tell you uh, tell our audience that sir has been really modest about his role yeah. uh, he has uh, a lot more to offer he is training the students with voice modulation i'm working on pronunciation yeah. and uh, a lot of intonation That's narrative right. technique is bring dramaturgy in speech yeah. is also what we are looking for because when That's somebody right. reads out something they need mm-hmm. to modulate their voice mm-hmm. so that the listener can visualize what is being said That's right. and that's i think the agenda yeah, that is right. behind uh, having these sessions yeah. and uh, as we were saying the purpose of these sessions is to churn out talent that's right talent for an ever growing industry that mm-hmm. is in its wake that's yeah. just uh, taking uh, its baby steps mm-hmm. and which is going to be a big industry and sir yes uh, yeah. uh, which brings us i think uh, to uh, the the area which we yeah. were talking about a, f- a few days back that's right uh, we were discussing the future of audio books in that's india that's right that's right. right and this uh, lead to the second question uh, what i believe that if you see today social media it is filled with the audio books so mm-hmm. what is the reason behind the growth of audio books industry and how do you see a uh, storytelling business growing in india Yeah so this is the pertinent question i think uh, which actually mm-hmm. was behind the uh, thought which brought this platform yeah. into its uh, present shape and yeah. i think that is also our long term uh, goal that's right in building inspiria mic so mm. there are very many reasons sir, why audio books are becoming more popular yeah. compared to uh, you know there's a dying reading culture that's all right. over Uh, the world you can see i mean people still stick to uh, mm. even i uh, prefer the touch of a paper and the smell yeah. of a new book yeah, yeah? yeah. but then uh, well let's face it lives are too stressed mm. and we all are running on you know on hamster wheels on a timeline so that's right. we do not uh, get a lot of time to indulge in reading a 300 page long exactly. book exactly yeah no matter how much hmm. we want no matter how much we try yeah. the tenacity is missing yes. the inclination the wish is there the desire yeah. is there the inclination is gone yeah so what can we do yeah. one thing is that yeah. second thing is uh, in the wake of which has happened uh, over this past one year which yeah. has been very hard at the same time full of new opportunities for all of us all world mm-hmm. over the pandemic has um, increased our yeah. screen times with leaps and bounds that's right yeah so because of increased screen time what has happened is uh, our attention span has got a little low mm-hmm. especially with uh, the generation of kids we deal with the yeah. the generation of teenagers which we teach in college i mean the attention span is really low i mean i clearly remember mm. when i started teaching several years back yeah. i used to ask the students and they used to name a few books that they have read yeah. but now they would say no i am not a reader even the literature students that i interact with yeah. they tell me no i am not so much of a reader but yes often on i listen to an audio book yeah. yeah so which means yes people are ready to consume that cultural product which we call books mm. but the medium of consuming it has changed okay because of okay, this said. reduced time yeah. attention span That's and right. so on and so forth yes people are tired people want to uh, you know just Uh, go home and crash because they have long days now yeah or even if they are stay put then they are staying put mm-hmm. at home because mm. of the pandemic yeah. their screen time is too much after which they are left with no energy to yeah. read through the lines that's right you pointed it so, quite right yeah yes yeah, so maybe that's yeah. the reason why audio books are coming in and also let's face it it's convenient yes. you can listen to an audio book yeah. passive listening goes on and you can carry on with some other work that's right 
and it stays in your mind somewhere yeah. at the back of your mind so yes, that right. knowledge can be capitalized on later on yeah so maybe it's more convenient for um, uh, for working professionals for teenagers i mean yeah. mostly the uh people who are too much uh, into their lives yes yes occupied in their lives yeah. in very many ways so yeah. that's one reason and uh, what i feel the second reason is that in metropolitan they don't have any time to watch the videos yes. but if they can listen to the audio book mm-hmm. i think their problem is solved mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh since i'm from delhi i can tell you my experience that most of the people you see in metro they listen to the music they listen to the audio books yeah. but yeah. i don't see people reading anything mm-hmm. and their lack of people traveling true 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 same goes for the mumbai local train as well so i think uh, everybody is getting benefit from this thing mm-hmm. but what i feel that in metropolitan this culture is growing what do you say what do you think about it absolutely sir because uh, the bigger the city the lesser time people have in their hands that's right say. so the yeah. rat race is even bigger yeah so yeah. and we can't help it we have to carry on with the pace of life yeah so even if while commuting uh, to the office while coming back from your college yeah. if you can at least if if you if you're in a crowded train and you cannot hold up a book at least you can plug in your earplugs and yeah. you know you can listen yeah, to yeah, something yeah. yeah so that craving which is there in your mind to That's go right. through a book Yeah. can be uh, replenished yeah. through uh, can be uh, fulfilled through yeah. listening to audio books at least that's right a kind of compensation i would say that's right that's right because in the end of the day the purpose is very much filled means if you're reading it mm-hmm. or if you're listening to mm-hmm. it i know that um, i am a kind of person who would love to read yeah Same. would love to have a mm-hmm. physical feel for that particular yes. book but if i don't have any option but i will go for the listening yeah. as well mm mm-hmm. because somewhere i feel that knowledge is important yes if it is getting through reading or listening it means same to me whichever form is convenient yeah whichever form and is let's face right. it we have to keep adapting otherwise we yeah. become irrelevant that's right so yeah. we have to keep our pace that's with right. the changing times yes changing time means the technology is changing yeah right so uh, i think this is the best time for mm-hmm. everyone to get uh, self aware and to get yes. more knowledge social media is giving us this option mm-hmm. even youtube as well mm-hmm. if you see the lot of channels coming in for audio books podcast exactly so this is i think this is the best time for human kind to get informed yes information yeah. is being made much easier that's right much much easier yeah. to consume in consumable bits i mean you know chewable bits we are yeah. throwing in inf- information and uh even uh, our experience with students also tells us right sir they mm-hmm. will say that i i'll watch it uh, youtube if if there's some material available on youtube or not then we keep on posting links yeah. so that there are some online material some uh, mm-hmm. read out chapters That's right. anything that can they can easily access compared to giving them uh, dozens of pdf which we yeah. used to a few years back yeah yeah that's right you're right so one thing is there so i, I can clearly now go back to the time sir mm. when digitization of books was just starting yeah so a whole lot of uh, physical books were being transformed the, into the PDF. digital versions okay. pdfs yeah. so i think another time has come now hmm. when similarly all yeah. those books which yeah. were digitized ones will be were converted into different form now the form is the audio book that's form. right i was about to tell this yes. thing even uh, sir has mentioned the same thing yes. the other day yeah so when we had the first meeting i think yeah. uh, uh, sir came up i yeah. sir came up with this point that yeah. uh, why not uh, think of building an audio book database that's right so this this is a growing industry this, this and sir being quite a visionary he yeah. can at least see it yeah. that there's a lot of career opportunity coming up in this industry so why not train your students yeah. into the art of sto- through storytelling yes that's right into becoming a uh, voice artist who can actually contribute to the demands mm, of this industry that's right and if you see my second part of this question mm-hmm. how do you see storytelling business growing mm-hmm. i think uh, there's lot of demand yes. but there's less supply yes so if we can manage the demand and supply and nothing like it very nicely put sir yeah a lot of demand and yeah. less supply yeah. so and what better medium can telling stories yeah. be uh, thought of to yeah. you know encourage people right. to speak up and use their voice to the best benefits that's right yeah so uh, my next question to you since you are from literature background mm-hmm. so can you just tell us our, our audience about uh, 
as I mentioned the topic uh, career in storytelling and mm-hmm. content writing so I just wanted to know uh, basically about content writing so mm-hmm. what is the basic uh, career in content writing if you can guide our audience about it all right so another very uh, important and I would say um, what can I what can I say it is yeah. the need of the hour I think yeah, that yeah, we yeah. take content writing very seriously mm-hmm. because uh, I was uh, reading through a few budding entrepreneurs interviews and how they are looking at uh, hmm. making the best use of uh, the digital platform to uh, you know showcase their products to market their uh, services everyone is saying that content is going to be the king yeah so content marketing is the future that's right so be it email marketing be it uh, through blogs be it through promotional articles mm-hmm. be it through press releases yeah marketing uh, sees its future in <coughs> building content that's right <coughs> excuse me no and problem. that's uh, yeah. the prime reason why mm. several uh, content creation platforms mm-hmm. are coming into being now okay so yes literally companies devoted to creating good content like mm-hmm. people are outsourcing their content demands right. to them and yeah, they are yeah. creating it they have their own set of writers and yeah. their editorial team okay. who kind of doubly triply check the content mm-hmm. and send it back to the client That's so right. basically uh, a clear understanding of the client's brief yeah followed by your own acumen for writing which mm-hmm. is very important yes. to imagine visualize and research uh-huh. the product that you are writing about that's right so writing it finally then the last wing is the editing part which yeah. is very important so the students who are studying english language communication student who are uh, studying english literature please don't limit your choices to yeah. teaching in a school or a college yeah. and that's just about it the way uh, maybe 10 years ago students used to think please yeah. don't think like that yeah. the field is growing we mm. have our own industry which is growing with leaps and bounds believe me yeah. so if uh, you are uh, you have that uh, knack of writing if you are a desk loving person if you are invested in research if you want to read and read and read yeah, and produce yeah. something out of your readings yeah. also if you are inte- uh, i i i better not yeah. say intelligent if you are sharp enough to uh, understand the client's demands and mm-hmm. cater to it then content writing is your game please try your hand out at it please don't limit yourself only to the conventional career choices yeah. that come to your mind when you go to study english literature or english language and communication there's a lot more that the industry is going to offer and hopefully in the next uh, yeah. coming 10 years yeah there is going to be an even bigger boom in this industry so welcome <laughs> <laughs> that's right so you have to take uh, my audiences please take all these points very seriously because these points are coming from very experienced uh, person she has very good experience so please take these uh, points very seriously or you can make a note of it as well because uh, yeah. i uh, freelance as a content writer yeah. and i edit as well yeah. so uh, if you can the best thing uh, to go about it is if you write and edit at the same time yeah. so because both the things complement each other that's right nothing is an isolated occupation when it comes to creation Yeah. Right. So uh if you are a content writer you should have an editorial eye because yeah. that's how your content is filtered. Okay. And if you are an editor you yeah. have to understand the hacks of writing. That's right. Otherwise there will be a gap between your editing proofreading and how the content is being created at the nascent level. Okay. So this gap needs to be bridged. If both the things can go hand in hand, that's the best combination this industry can ever expect. Yes, uh, very rightly said. Um I just wanted to give my audience few tips so yes. that they can become a good content writer please please sir please no yeah. i just want you to give <laughs> okay no you go ahead yeah. i why i would say yeah. uh, this is because content by content it's not just written content yeah i mean a uh, sir is uh, being very very modest here because sir himself yeah. creates a lot of content he generates a lot of good youtube content he generates a lot of good infographics yeah and nice motivational content so sir is also quite an adept at this i think your insights will also be okay. valuable for us when it comes to uh, digital content creation yeah, because okay. uh, 
how we uh, write and create the blogs most of mm. the time we see that uh, the uh, whenever i talk to my students who ha- are taking up internships yeah. or you know who are actually uh, rooting for these roles yeah. right yeah. writing roles they tell me that ma'am uh, we need to know um, digital marketing as well because uh, when it comes to creating content sometimes there is a demand for infographics mm-hmm. there is a demand for um, you know uh, can that's how people start learning canva i guess yeah. and i think sir yeah. uh, is the uh, is my uh, uh, one colleague who introduced me to canva yeah, for the first yeah, time yeah. and that has helped me a lot because i have helped many other students right. with taking up canva and using it for their content so uh, basically if you can visualize your content yeah nicely and create the snippets the banners or whatever it is yeah. you can uh, make it even more mm. interesting more creative and more entertaining for the audience yes apart from just creating writing written content so we will come to written content in a while first i would like to hear out from sir sir yeah. what you have to say about uh that. i believe that one should read a lot if yeah. you read uh, mm. you will get thousand of ideas yes and if you want to become a good writer then you have to read means you have to read newspaper you have to read books and uh, i often uh, hear a lot of motivational stories I, so from all these things i can write my own content i am not a good content writer i know that <laughs> but every day as a human we have to learn a lot from each and every one mm-hmm. from us uh, so you have to be a learner first and uh, if you are reading uh, every day i think sooner or later you can become a content writer it's not a big deal just you have to read at least half an hour or one hour a day before you go to sleep or whenever you are free so that's how this is the first step you can take so this is what i want to tell my audience uh, if you can add something in this yes reading and if reading is impossible then definitely as we said audio books yeah listen to a lot of content uh, now reading does not always mean that you have to read through a whole book yeah. as sir said you can read the newspapers you read uh, content online yeah okay authentic websites definitely yeah authentic yeah authentic news learn the difference between fake news and mm-hmm. authentic news which is very important yeah. and uh, then gather your data a lot of research bent of mind is required for mm-hmm. creating good content that's right if your content is not well researched if your data is not backed up by hyperlinks and uh, related links which yeah. can support this a uh, particular survey or a particular um, piece of information that you're going to put through uh, to your audience yeah. then it doesn't make any sense Yeah. Because why should I read your content? I'll read your content because I'm looking for certain kind of information. That's right. So information becomes very important, and as long as in- information comes in its purest form, in its most authentic form, obviously dressed in a very good language, which yeah. is entertaining. At the yeah. same time, uh, uh, you know the kind of language which actually gives you the extra push to read through the second sentence, then the third, then the fourth, yes. till you finish it. That's right. So that's how you have to write. also <coughs> having said that there are a lot of tools available now to mm. check whether uh, you are uh, doing justice to your content or not and uh, there are a few um, a lot of plagiarism check softwares yeah. that are available online there are a lot of uh, grammar help yeah. softwares like grammarly everyone knows yeah, grammarly yeah, yeah. so um, these things can help you a lot to improve on your writing skills so why i named plagiarism check is uh, when you are creating content it's your uh, responsibility that you do not copy hmm. yeah you look for information you gather information you gather ideas that's right but you as a writer it's your responsibility you do not copy paste that's right so hmm. original content counts because otherwise if you are uh, lifting a lot of content from other places and just copy pasting it it will hamper the seo system like anything mm-hmm. the search results yeah. won't uh, yeah, be agree. too friendly to it yeah. so uh, because of these obvious overlaps so you have to uh, look into all those aspects also there is a lot of technicality involved in content writing which begins from uh, uh, a term which is very much in vogue these days it's called seo search yeah, engine yeah, optimization right. so mm. people should learn more about it mm. 
before they start uh, taking up content writing how keywords are to be used how keyword searches can be done i think sir we had a yeah, discussion about yeah, the keyword right. searches one day yeah, yeah. so uh, you have to figure out the most searched keywords and then use them in your content as per the requirement of that particular content you are writing say suppose you are writing uh, a, a a city guide That's for right. a travel company hmm. so uh, there you have to look for best places to stay mm -hmm. in the city best uh, eateries yeah uh, so restaurant these can be or uh, travel destination uh, airline bookings these can be the keywords for that kind of a content yeah. because when people are planning their That's travel right. yeah. they will read your content they will read the city guide and yeah. how they will search they will search through these words these expressions That's right. so these are called long the, the keywords that i mentioned are long tailed ones because yeah. best places to stay definitely yeah. is a long tailed keyword yeah. which can be uh, modulated as per the grammatical needs of the content so look through uh, this kind mm. of uh, a mechanism which is very interesting is when you go through seo you will find a lot of online certification courses That's right. in fact linkedin has a very good yeah. uh, seo uh, yeah. online course digital marketing courses and yeah, all yeah, yeah. available so you can also uh, look through those courses uh, if you get a certification and then you uh, get on with content writing i think that's going to take you a long way because understanding keywords that's is right. the key to producing yeah, good content yeah, yeah. Very nicely, ma'am. Uh, well, with this, uh, I I wanted to ask my last mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to know that since you are from BBA department, yeah, I am. I am. I'm sure that you are the best person to answer this question. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to know a role of storytelling mm -hmm. in marketing and in in sales. Okay, so uh, yeah, a little clarification here. I am from BBA department, but I teach business communication. Yeah. And hence, uh, so it is uh, just tying the uh, you know, strings here. Yeah. yeah. When we teach business communication, uh, there is a very uh, important module which deals with the role of communication uh, in um, marketing. And there, uh, I literally teach advertisements. Yes. So branding and uh, generating sales through marketing. Mm -hmm has a lot to do with communication because their communication is in a mass form. Yeah. You are not communicating one to one, you are communicating with a larger That's target right. audience. Yeah. So first thing is to understand your audience, audience target right. group. Yeah. For that we do a lot of things, we uh, do audience analysis, hmm. we uh, fill up, make people fill up questionnaires and there can be several other yeah. very many That's things, right. surveys, market There's surveys, a lot of tools, yeah. older uh, surveys. So hmm. that's how you figure out your target audience group. Hmm. Now, once you have figured that group out, then comes the brand building part. For yeah. instance, if I am uh, catering to, I, I'm writing about a chocolate brand, like yeah. I'm uh, trying to promote a chocolate brand, yeah. then definitely my target audience starts from a very young age. Right? That's right. So the advertisements should be jovial. Yeah. The advertisements should be happy. Yeah. They should bring a smile on your face and yes, it has right. to be family content. Yeah. Yeah. Not so much of uh, tricky, intelligent jokes cannot be cracked mm. over there. It has to be, the subject matter has to be simple. Yeah. That's why maybe since time immemorial, Cadbury yeah. Khushia hi baat rahe. Huh, Cadbury right. is selling happiness, yeah. not chocolates. Mm. And how they place it, yeah. kuch meetha ho jaye, yeah. it is actually keeping the Indian demography in mind. Yes. Like in India, Whenever we uh, go for something auspicious, yeah. then meetha khao. Huh. Something good happens. Yeah, we after celebrate lunch it. or after dinner, we yeah. eat some Desert, Desert, of course. Yeah. And any auspicious occasion, any good occasion is mm. always blessed with sweets. Mm. Maybe that's why because of uh, this reason, the advertisements of Cadbury always uh, come uh, with new avatars and new editions before mm. Raksha Bandhan, before yeah, Diwali. Yeah, yeah. They will bring, bring those festival That's packages right. and yeah. they try to sell happiness yeah. and sweetness through their chocolate. That's right. Then brand story. So there yeah. one narrative is being built. Hmm. A narrative is being built for a nation yeah. which associates uh, something auspicious with sweetness. That's right. Right. Then uh, another example can be uh, the story of Colonel Sanders and KFC. Yeah, KFC. Like all those spices, secret yeah. spices of some Colonel Sanders from Kentucky. Yeah. And we literally see the Colonel's face yeah. on the KFC poster. So that's, right. that's a brand story that has been created around KFC. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere, all around the world, whichever KFC outlet you go to, you will see the same old Colonel's mm. picture. That's right. 
and the story will be fresh in your mind that some secret ingredient is there which yeah. this which was this man's invention yeah. Yeah. and which makes this chicken so tasty so that brand story is directly uh, proportional to the usp of the brand as well yeah. so secret ingredients becomes kfc's usp yeah. through this story yeah. so that's how whenever an advertisement comes in yeah. they sell a lot of stories they're building mm. stories around their brand yeah. they create the brand through stories and yes. i think um, uh, i would like you to chip in here a little bit sir i have seen you yeah. read for, uh, read uh, about a lot of entrepreneurs a lot yeah. of uh, startup uh, masterminds and you know a lot of uh, such personalities whose lives can be exemplified uh, as you know uh, role models for all yeah. of us yeah. and in fact uh, i can uh, being uh, a part of the bba department uh, what i've seen is uh, we have uh, one of the bba specializations in entrepreneurship yeah. where the syllabus hmm. one of the papers you'll be surprised to see yeah. is full of stories oh wow of uh, yes yeah. case studies and stories yeah. of these uh, successful entrepreneurs yeah. so uh, i think we can clearly associate storytelling with that as well that's I mean, right what do you say uh, yeah that's right and uh, i'm a keen reader about the entrepreneurship uh, if i talk about the entrepreneurship in india it's quite new mm-hmm. although it's been practiced from quite long but mm-hmm. we since it's a very cool term entrepreneur yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, we have a few entrepreneur like ritesh agarwal mm-hmm. who i follow uh, elon musk is mm-hmm. there uh, and uh, there are a lot of more uh, which we can have a lot of learnings from yeah. them mark zuckerberg is there mm-hmm. uh, since he's from the technology background uh, ritesh agarwal he has his own uh, oyo oyo so there are a lot of uh, new entrepreneurs are coming and uh, since you said that there is a uh, stories about their brands and there's a slavers as well so i feel that more and more entrepreneurs will come and will come to know more about uh, them uh, what i just wanted to share with you i have heard one uh, saying of ritesh agarwal that in india uh if you see any entrepreneur mm-hmm. and if you see them that they are uh, famous overnight so overnight is nothing it just require at least 5 or 6 years of day and night yes hardship True. then you came to know about them true so you will get the overnight success if you win the lottery yeah <laughs> <laughs> other than that uh if you see any entrepreneur successful entrepreneur it means they have uh, struggled a lot yes. for 5 or 6 or 7 years or more um so it's not so cool entrepreneur just a word so cool but the if you see their lives in the beginning it was not so cool it was yeah. very tough and full of struggle but at the same time you get a lot of learning as well true true uh, so, uh, <coughs> so i'm that person who learns every day mm-hmm. and i've got a lot of information knowledge from mm-hmm. them and i try to implement their things in my life so that mm-hmm. what they have suffered i should not suffer yeah. and uh, i share with the same stories with my student as well and uh, they like all these stories <laughs> and as you mentioned that these these stories are there in the slavers so i think we are on the right track yes yeah. because nothing can inspire people more than stories that's right i mean stories can inspire your imagination stories can inspire uh, you to move ahead stories yeah. can motivate you like anything i mean the entire generation yeah. even uh, uh, so the entire civilization yeah. can if one thing can motivate you is stories yeah so that's how i think uh, it began in the oral culture and it is still there yeah and uh, in fact uh, when i teach public speaking to my students yeah. in one of my cl- in some of my classes uh, i clearly focus on this one point that try to bring in a few personal stories related to the topic that you're discussing yeah. because nothing uh, more can be uh, nothing can be more uh, you know nothing can establish a better connectivity than when people come out there and share their stories with others yeah, because yeah. everyone at some point or the other at some human level or the other tries to connect with the other and i think that's how we form these uh, unending chain yeah. uh, chains of human compassion and human connection that's right we connect through stories and that's i right. think that's just one part of the whole that's right so uh i have to ask a lot of questions but uh, unfortunately we are not out of time so uh we will continue with this in my second season <laughs> for the first season i think that's it uh 
So thank you uh, Nisha ma'am for coming for, for this podcast. Thank It you, was sir. a pleasure talking to you. I'm sure Same that here. my audience will get a lot of information from you. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks sir. And that's a fantastic yeah. endeavor that you are uh, carrying on the Gyan series. Yeah. It's it's pretty cool actually. I mean yeah. all the professors coming in sharing yeah. their insights and there's a lot uh, of information that's coming in a very lucid form which is definitely going to be beneficial so i would like to congratulate sir here yeah, thank you for thinking of this innovative idea and bringing it into our lives yeah thank you very much uh, that's it from the inspira gyan series in my next episode we'll with, meet with new guest so till then please take care of yourself have a wonderful day goodbye <laughs>